boys and girls, it's Mrs. Smith. What a special Bible time we will have today. So I hope you brought your watching eyes, your listening ears, your quiet mouth, except when we're singing, then I want you to sing out as loud as you can. You're going to need a few things before we begin our Bible time. And when you get them, just put them down by your feet. We won't use them toward until the end of the lesson, but this way you'll be ready for it. So number one, you're going to need a spoon. Now this can be a big spoon from your mom's kitchen. It could be a tablespoon, or it could even be a little plastic spoon. The size does not matter. You just need one spoon. Then you need a ball. Now it can be a little ping pong ball, a little soccer ball, or maybe you have a ball this size. I just took it from Connor and Jenna's bathtub, or maybe it could even be a, a baseball. The size probably shouldn't be bigger than this because we're going to use it on your kitchen table. So one ball, one spoon, and then you're going to need some tape. And mom will probably have to help you with this part of the activity, but just have it ready. So a ball, a spoon and some tape. You go get it while I sing, I like to go to church. I like to go to church. I like to go to church. Hi ho the dairy -o. I like to go to church. I like to stand up tall. I like to stand up tall. Hi ho the dairy -o. I like to stand up tall. I like to jump up and down. I like to jump up and down. Hi ho the dairy -o. I like to jump up and down. I like to clap my hands. I like to clap my hands. Hi ho the dairy -o. I like to clap my hands. I love to please the Lord. I love to please the Lord. Hi ho the dairy -o. I love to please the Lord. You may be seated. I hope you brought those three things. What do you have there by your feet? A spoon, a ball, and tape. Well done. Now don't play with those until it's time for us to use them. Now I know you've been out of school for a little bit. Summer vacation has officially started and I'm wondering how well you remember your ABCs. Well, let's sing the ABC song, but the Bible way. You ready? A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Jesus died for you and me. H, I, J, K, L, M, N. Jesus died for sinful men. Amen. O P Q R S T U, I believe God's word is true. U V W, God has promised you X Y Z, a home eternally. Well done. Here's a question for you: Who does God love? Everyone. And who does God want to live with Him in heaven? Everyone. Does it matter where you live? No, you can live in Japan with Mr. Nick and Miss Lorena in, um, and baby Levi. You could live in Africa with Miss Pamela, or you could even live here in the United States of America. God loves you. Does it matter the clothes that you wear? No. Does it matter the color of your skin? No, because Jesus loves you. Let's sing the song, Jesus Loves the Little Children. Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world. Red, brown, yellow, black, and white, all are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Have you noticed how everyone was dressed differently and how everyone looked differently? There's no two people alike, but God loves you all the same. Now, here's something that children forget. We know that God loves us, but we sometimes forget to do this. Are you thinking? Yes, sometimes we forget to be kind. We forget to be kind to those in our family, to our friends, um, even in the way that we talk and our tone is very unkind. Kind is another word for nice. Has somebody been nice or kind to you recently? Tell me about it. Oh, good. Your brother let you share it with a um, game that he was playing. 
That was kind. What's another way? Oh, your mom gave you the last ice cream pop. Oh, that was kind. Now, have you been kind to somebody? Oh, I, I, that is wonderful. You just said, and I'll tell everybody so they can hear, that you were kind when you said thank you. That's right. Even little words like thank you and please and I'm sorry show kindness. Do you know that when you love God with all your heart, in your heart grows kindness. And when you show the love of God in different ways to other people, it's like your heart is stretching out, letting other people know that God loves you and God loves them. Now, think about these ways that we can be kind to one another. In fact, let's say, spell, say the word kind. K, or kind, K-I-N-D, kind. That's an easy word. In fact, there's just four letters. Let's spell it again. Kind, K-I-N-D. So how can we stretch our heart? Well, when you share your toys, you are showing kindness and stretching that heart. When you tell the truth, that's a good one. When you say, I'm sorry, that's a picture of God's love. When you tell others about Jesus, that's a good one. You want them to have a home in heaven one day. When you cheer each other on, when you're a little bit sad, that's good. When you speak with kind words, that's a big one too. These are all ways that you can show God's love stretching. Now, you see what I have behind here? So it's just pretending that your heart is coming out, but it's very important to remember that you have to choose to be kind. It doesn't just happen. You have to think about it. So your thoughts, your words, your actions are all ways to stretch God's love. Do you know that the Bible calls God the great kindness? Yeah, in the Old Testament, in the book of Joel, God is called great kindness. Do you know in all of the Bible, over 300 times, the word kindness or mercy, which is close meaning to kindness, is used? Now, if I gave you a piece of paper and pencil and said for you to write these four letters, kind, 300 times, your hand would be so tired. But that's how important it is to God that you're kind. Do you know when people are unkind to you and you stretch God's love out to them by being kind, it makes them stop and think and say, what's different about that person? Well, that all reminds me of our verse from last time. Remember it was Father's Day and we read in the book of Proverbs chapter 23, verse 24, the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice. And we said rejoice was to be happy. And the father of the righteous means those that live godly, that want to show God's love. And I showed you these pictures, not thinking about kindness, how is this boy being kind to this boy? Exactly right, they're taking turns. You see the smile on each of their faces? Now, how are these boys being kind to this little girl? Yeah, they're leaving her alone. They're not teasing her. They're not kicking the ball at her. She's not getting mad at them because they're playing over here, but they're still together. What about this card? How is this showing kindness? Yeah, you're right, they're listening to their teacher, but if you're talking and fooling around, can others hear what the teacher is saying? No, so when you choose to have quiet lips and listening ears, then you're being kind and respectful to others. Now, what about this boy, what is he doing? Yeah, he's praying. Well, what if there was somebody who was being unkind to him? What should he do about it? exactly right. He should talk to God about it. He should pray. If there's somebody being unkind to you, 
you be kind to them and you pray for them. Sometimes that's hard, but that's what God wants us to do is to be kind. Now you all live with a family. In my family, I'm the mommy. Mr. Jeff is the daddy. Connor is the big brother and Jenna is the little sister. Well, do you know we want to be kind to each other because God is kind to us. Listen to this. God is kind to mommy. God is kind to mommy. Hi ho the Dario. God is kind to mommy. God is kind to daddy. God is kind to daddy. Hi ho the Dario. God is kind to daddy. Now this time, if you're the brother, say your name, or if you have a brother, say his name. Stand. God is called kind to Connor. God is kind to Connor. Hi ho the Dario. God is kind to Connor or your name. Now, if you're the sister or you have a little sister, say that name. Stay standing. God is kind to Jenna. God is kind to Jenna. Hi ho the Dario. God is kind to Jenna. Now maybe you have a grandma and grandpa that live near you or with you or even far away. God is kind to them. God is kind to grandma and grandpa. God is kind to grandma and grandpa. Hi ho the Dario. God is kind to grandma and grandpa. You may be seated. So just as the father of the righteous shall greatly rejoice when we please him with good living. Our heavenly father is pleased when we make good choices. And because he loves us, he is kind to us. Remember, God is great kindness. Stretch up, stretch your hands, touch your knees, touch your elbows, touch your ears, turn around, sit down. Now blow out air like this. Good, because you'll need to do that in just a minute. Now, kindness. Is there any kindness that is too small? Is there any kindness that is too big? Say, Mrs. Smith, what are you talking about? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever been to a, a pond or a river, the ocean, and you've stepped into it, the water, and it's rippled. You know, the water has moved. That's called ripples. Or maybe you've thrown a stone into the water and you've seen it ripple. Or maybe you've seen a fish jump out of it and it's rippled. Well, those ripples are an example of kindness in action. Here's what I mean. I have a bowl of water here. I know it's really hard for you to see. Maybe you could do this at your house in just a little bit after our Bible time. I have filled it halfway with water. Now let's pretend that this ribbon is a picture of kindness. Let's say you're sharing your toy with your brother. Is it going to make the water ripple? I drop it in. Now you can't see it, so you're gonna to have to trust me. Yes, it made the water ripple. So we could say that's like a little thing, just like if you were playing with a stuffed animal and your brother or sister wanted it, that sharing is a little kindness that made a difference. Well, what about a paper clip? Something that keeps papers together. If I get the water real still and I put it in, is it gonna make a difference? This is like helping mommy set the table. Oh, it moved the water it rippled it. So when you are helping mommy set the table and being kind, you're making a difference. Well, my Connor and Jenna love Cheerios. Now this is teeny tiny. Let's pretend that this is just saying kind words like, thank you, please, I'm sorry. Is this going to ripple? It sure did. Even the littlest thing makes a ripple. Now what about a big Stick. This might be helping dad clean out the garage or carrying some heavy boxes. Are you showing kindness and helping? Oh, that really moved the water. Mm, how about a rubber band that holds things together? Um, maybe this is like cleaning up your dirty clothes and putting them in the laundry basket when mom asks, so you're kind in your obedience. Yep, 
That rippled the water. Um, don't forget, go like this. I told you we were gonna blow on it. Just even blowing air rippled. Those are all the words that you speak and the tone that you use, that you use a kind tone. Now, how about something heavier? Watch this. Oh, that was a big ripple. Maybe you even heard about it. That might be something like giving your computer game to a friend to use. You're really showing kindness there. Well, let me put the water down for a minute. So I wanna show you one more thing. You like to make cookies and you like to put sprinkles on them. Well, these sprinkles are littlest things that I could find in my house. In fact, if I put some on my finger, they're so small, you can't even see them. So let's pretend that these little sprinkles are little bits of kindness where you are picking up the trash off the floor or you're letting somebody take a turn first. All of those little things that we do day in, day out. Now let me get the water real still. Will these little sprinkles cause a ripple? Yes. I can, now I know you can't see, so you're gonna have to trust me. As these sprinkles go into the water, the water is moving around them. Boys and girls, God is great kindness. God shows us love through his kindness. God loves to love on us. And we stretch our heart of love when we love on other people through kindness. This is why it's so important because it's commanded for us to be kind. In fact, you can see I'm in the back of my Bible in the book of Ephesians, chapter four, verse 32, it says, be ye kind one to another, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Just the first part of that verse, be ye kind one to another. God expects it. He wants it. It could be hard and you might forget sometimes, but when you remember that God wants us to do it, it makes it oh so important. Look at this card. Here's two girls hugging each other. Let me put it up here for you. Now maybe they're hugging each other because one tripped and fell and the other helped her up. Maybe they're hugging each other because one wanted to go down the slide and the other was afraid and so the friend helped her. Maybe one slipped down off the ladder. Maybe one threw a snowball at the other because I see snow in the picture. I don't know what happened, but I can see in the end that they're loving one another. Be ye kind one to another. Do you think she said, I'm sorry? And do you think another one said, that's okay, I forgive you. See, when you're happy being kind, God is happy. He loves you oh so much and he wants you to obey boys and girls in the form of being kind. Be ye kind one to another. In fact, it's another hand verse. You ready? Be ye kind one to another. Ephesians 4.32. Be ye kind one to another. Stand, let's say it together. Ephesians 4.32. Be ye kind one to another. Ephesians 4.32. Let's try it again. Ephesians 4.32. Be ye kind one to another. Ephesians 4, 32. Now put your hand to your mouth, blow out that air, <sighs> pretend all the ripples in the water, and let's say the verse to make the water ripple. Ready? Ephesians 4, 32. Be ye kind one to another. Ephesians 4, 32. <sighs> well done. I know. God is pleased when we remember to be kind with one another. You may be seated. One more picture I wanna show you. I know it looks a little silly. It's a giant heart. But boys and girls, we love one another with our hearts. We remember to be kind to one another from our hearts. But what's the crown say? 
Jesus, that's right. Do you know when Jesus is Lord of your life, that means he's in charge of your life because you've given your heart to him. You said, I'm sorry for the sin I've done. Please forgive me. Come into my heart and save me. And Jesus, the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. So when you crown Jesus as Lord of your life, then your words are kindness. Your thoughts are kind thoughts. And your actions are kind actions. When Jesus lives inside you, your words, your thoughts, your actions are pictures of Jesus and that God's love, that heart is stretching even further. You know what? That makes me pretty happy and I hope it makes you happy, happy enough to stand and sing if you're happy and you know it. Ready? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, stomp your feet. If you're happy and you know it, say, I love you. I love you. If you're happy and you know it, say, I love you. I love you. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, say, I love you. I love you. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. I love you. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. I love you. If you're happy and you know it, then your face will surely show it. If you're happy and you know it, do all three. I love you. Well done. You may be seated. Now, we have talked a lot about God's love here. All these kind things coming from our heart. I think it'd be perfect time right now to stop, to pray, to thank God for his kindness, and to ask him to help us to remember to be kind. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Heavenly Father, thank you for loving us so much. God, for all of these weeks, we have spoken of your love, your kindness to us, how you sent Jesus, your son, to die on the cross for us so we could have a home in heaven. God, that is great kindness. May we reflect your love. May we be a picture of your love, your kindness. God, you're nice to us. Help us to show that to other people. Sometimes we forget. Help us to remember. Lord, we want to pray for our church family, Plantation Baptist Church. God, keep our family safe. Keep them coming back to church. I know the boys and girls are eager to see their friends. Help them to uh, make good choices for their families when it's time for them to come back to church. But Lord, in the meantime, help us keep loving you. Help us to remember to be kind to the missionaries by praying for them. Lord, we remember the Zarellas to Japan, Miss Pamela to Botswana, Africa, my sister. God, protect them. Help people to show kindness to them as they are showing love and kindness to others by telling other people about you. Lord, we love our country. Put your hand of protection about it. Help our president make wise decisions. Surround him with good people that would love you and help him to make wise choices. God, we ask for safety. We ask for your protection. And we thank you for your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, I know that there were two boys, men, that we spoke of in our last lesson who showed love and kindness to one another. In fact, one was the son of the king. We call him a prince. Do you remember King Saul's son's name? Yeah, Jonathan. And, oh, it looks like he has a shepherd's hood. Um, he's got a pouch, maybe with some stones, a slingshot. What's his name? David, you're right. And they were the best of friends. In fact, both of them loved 
God. And David was given a great victory one day with God's help. What does the slingshot and that little pouch of rocks remind us of? Yeah, when David killed Goliath. Let's stand and sing that song. Only a boy named David, only a little sling. Only a boy named David, but he could pray and sing. Only a boy named David, only a rippling brook. Only a boy named David, but five little stones he took. And one little stone went into the sling, and the sling went round and round. And one little stone went into the sling, and the sling went round and round. And round and round and round and round and round and round and round. And one little stone went up in the air, hit the giant fair and square, right in the place where he has no hair. And the giant came a tumbling down. <laughs> You're right, you may be seated. Well, we know that David and Jonathan made a promise to each other. Do you remember what that promise was? Yeah, good thinking. That they would always take care of each other and one another's family. Be kind one to another. And Jonathan showed kindness to David by giving David some gifts. What did David receive from Jonathan? Yeah, a robe, a sword, a belt. This was Jonathan's way of saying, I will keep my promise. Well, Jonathan's daddy, King Saul, was not too happy with David. Do you remember why? Yeah, because out in a battle against the Philistines, both Saul and David had killed some Philistines, but the women sang, Saul has killed his thousands, David has killed his tens of thousands, and Saul became j -j -j jealous. That's right. And one day when he was so upset, what did he do? He threw that spear, that javelin, and almost killed David. Did it happen just one time? No, we read it happened a second time and a third time. And even Saul tried to kill his own son, Jonathan, because he was so angry. Now, because Jonathan cared for David, the Bible says that he loved David. Be ye kind one to another. Da Jonathan said to David, stay here in the, cast uh, in the palace. No, he told David to run and hide and let me talk to my father. Well, Jonathan did talk to his father and Jonathan had told David, when I give you the, the clue or when I throw those bow and arrow, if I throw them close to you, it's safe. But if I throw them far away from you, then you need to run. And what does the Bible say happened? Yeah, Jonathan talked to his daddy. His daddy was so upset. Jonathan knew it was not safe for David to stay there. He took those bows and arrows and he flung them or threw them shot them far away and he said run run as fast as you can and that's where we ended the story where david had to go in hiding but what did jonathan show david kindness jonathan saved david's life and david would always remember that well much time went on and battle after battle took place. And sadly, King Saul and Jonathan were killed. David became king. Now there was a little bit of time that happened, but David was a good king. And we actually sang about King David. Stand and let's sing. King David had an army of 50,000 men. He marched them up the hillside and marched them down again. So when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. But when you're only halfway up, you're neither up nor down. Woo! You want to do that one again? All right, here we go. Now David is king. King David had an army of 50,000 men. He marched them up the hillside and marched them down again. So when you're up, you're up. And when you're down, you're down. 
But when you're only halfway up, you're neither up nor down. Woo! That was good singing. You may be seated. So David had become a very good king. David was a king who showed great kindness. In fact, this pillow and this chair has something to do with David's kindness. Hmm, you say, Mrs. Smith, this is getting crazier and crazier. What does it have to do with David? Well, you'll find out. And it's a way that David is showing kindness. Hmm. So he was a good king, boys and girls. In fact, the Bible says that he was the, or not the Bible says, people say of David that he was the greatest king. But who is the greatest king, the best king of all? Yeah, King Jesus, because he's our heavenly father. He's the one who created us. He is the best king. But David loved God. In fact, the Bible says that David was a man after God's own heart. Do you remember when I read to you about David and how he behaved? Let me read it to you. David behaved himself wisely in all his ways. Saul saw that David behaved himself very wisely and was afraid. And David behaved himself more wisely than all the servants of Saul. So David, from a young man, was wise in the way he acted. And that's important to remember because the day he became king didn't mean all of a sudden he was going to be nice and kind and show love and mercy to people. No, this was something that David had shown from a child. How about you? Are you showing love and kindness even now as a child? Or does your mama have to help you to remember to be kind? Oh, I hope that's something that you work on so that you can be like David, who draws close to God. Well, David did a lot of good for Israel. And in fact, there had been some battles that were won and the Philistines really didn't bother Israel anymore. And it was during this time that David as king started thinking, started remembering. He was older now and he was missing his friend, Jonathan. Just like when you couldn't go back to school and you missed your friends, how did that make you feel? A little sad. Well, maybe you've had some friends that have moved away. Made you feel sad. Well, David was remembering Jonathan and he thought, I wonder if there's anybody in Jonathan's family who is still alive that I can show kindness to. I know, boys and girls, isn't that nice? In fact, the Bible says, and I'll read it to you, the very words, is there not any of the house of Saul that I may show kindness of God unto him? That's the word, kindness. David wanted to be kind. So David called, asked the servants, and the servants remembered a man named Ziba. You say that, Ziba. And Ziba had served in Jonathan's house and knew that Jonathan had a son named Mephibosheth who was still alive. Now that is a big long name. You say it, Mephibosheth, Mephibosheth. Well, here's the sad thing about Mephibosheth. Mephibosheth had an injury to where he couldn't use his feet very well. The Bible calls it lame. So Mephibosheth relied on other people to help him do things. Have you ever seen anyone use crutches? Maybe you've seen somebody who broke their foot, they used crutch for a time and then they got better. Maybe you've seen somebody who has to use it all the time. How about somebody in a wheelchair? Or maybe you've seen somebody who has to wear special braces on their feet to help them walk or even braces on their arm to help them use their arm. You may have seen all types of handicap or special need. And Mephibosheth is one who needed that extra help. Now, maybe people stared at him. Sometimes when people look different or do things differently, we stare. But 
we should be staring to say, how can I be a help? How can I make things easier for them? And that's exactly what David wanted to do. So he told the servant, go and get Mephibosheth. Now, if you were Mephibosheth and you were just minding your business and all of a sudden the king's servant comes to you and says, come see the king, how would you feel? Yeah, a little overwhelmed, like what have I done? What's going to happen? Well, here you can see Mephibosheth came and you see his crutch because he couldn't use his feet very well. He needed help but he bowed low before King David in a way to say, I am your servant. What can I do for you? And David saw that Mephibosheth was afraid. The Bible says that David said, Mephibosheth, fear not, for I will surely show thee kindness for Jonathan thy father's sake, and will restore thee all the land of Saul thy father, and thou shalt eat bread at my table continually. Wow, boys and girls. King David said, one, don't be afraid. I'm gonna be kind to you. Normally the new king is unkind to the other king's family, but not David. He showed love and mercy. Then he said, all the land that was your grandfather Saul's is now yours. And then no longer would he have to try to find food for himself. He was going to have food at King David's table. Now I wonder if it looked something like this, where they had chairs and fancy pillows. I told you it had something to do with kindness. And maybe this one was made specially for Mephibosheth. Maybe it was extra soft. Maybe he got to sit right next to King David. I don't know. But David even used a chair and a pillow to show kindness. Those were three ways that David showed kindness. Do you know that sometimes if you have a handicap, it's hard to eat and maybe somebody needs to help you cut your food or pour your drink. But Mephibosheth never had to worry about that again because there were going to be servants to take care of the land. He would always have food for his family. David showed kindness. Well, Mephibosheth couldn't believe this and he said, why? Why are you doing this for me? And King David said, because I made a promise to your father, Jonathan. See, David kept his promise. We should try very hard to keep our promises. David wasn't perfect, but in this, he showed kindness. It was a picture of God. And do you remember how this water rippled when I put things in it? This one act of kindness that David is showing to Mephibosheth is recorded in our Bible so that for all the people in the whole world that read 2 Samuel chapter 9, they read about David's kindness. Did this kind act make a difference? Oh, boys and girls, you, you're not going to get your actions of kindness written into the Bible because our Bible is already complete. But can you make a difference in the life of somebody else? Remember, God sent Jesus, his son, to live on the earth to show us how to love and to be kind and how to talk to one another. Jesus didn't care if the person was lame or had a handicap. Jesus talked to them and loved them just the same. It didn't matter to Jesus what color skin. In fact, look at this foot, listen. God made everybody red, brown, yellow, black, and white. He made us all quite different. No two are just alike. He gave us hands and fingers. He gave us feet and toes. I am very special. God's word tells me so. Because God made me, boys and girls, I can look for ways to show kindness to others. What was our Bible verse? Be ye kind one to another. Maybe you would like to trace your hands, tie them with ribbon, write the Bible verse. I just put a word on each hand 
and you wear your pair of extra helping hands around so you can be mindful thinking of ways that you can help other people. If somebody needs help carrying something, you can do it. You can be a helper. I want to teach you a brand new song called God Made Me, and then we'll get our tape ready for the special activity. It goes like this. God made me, God made me. I'm so glad that God made me. God made my fingers, God made my toes, God made my knuckles and God made my nose. God made my hip bones and God made my chin and God made the shape that I am in. God made me, God made me. I'm so glad that God made me. Boys and girls, when you think of this act of David in showing kindness to Mephibosheth, somebody who had a handicap, who needed extra help, you remember that God made you just the way he wanted you to. Maybe you have a little limp. Maybe it's hard for you to use your hands. Maybe it's hard for you to get up and run fast or to talk, but God made you just the way he wanted and you can serve him. So let's dance, let's try that new song. Try as many words as you can. God made me, God made me. I'm so glad that God made me. God made my fingers, God made my toes. God made my knuckles and God made my nose. God made my hip bones and God made my chin. And God made the shape that I am in. God made me, God made me. I'm so glad that God made me. And you know what? The Bible tells us that a friend loves at all times. You think about who you can be a special friend to this week. You may be seated. Now, I told you to get the piece of tape ready. Okay, you're going to need to tear off a couple inches of a piece of tape. You're going to wrap your thumb and pointer finger right around those knuckles. Make it nice and tight. Now look around you. Is there something that you can try to pick up? Like I see a banana here, watch this. Normally I'd use my thumb and my pointer, but I can't so I have to pick it up differently. Oh, here's some grapes. Oh, it's harder to pick up. What if I wanted something to drink? Oh, oh, I, I normally would hold it like this, but I gotta drink it funny. It's different. Just this little activity, and you can try to pick up books, paper clips, pencils, whatever you have there at your house, but it's just a reminder that what the Bible says is true. You are fearfully and wonderfully made. God gave you five fingers. And sometimes they work and sometimes they don't. And you be thankful that God has given you the use of your hands that he has. And for those that have a little bit more trouble, you remember that you can be kind and a helper to them. So that's a fun little activity. You, you have contests in your house to see who can pick up the different things. And is it hard or easy? The next thing is your spoon and your ball. Now I'm going to take the big spoon and the soccer ball. Mephibosheth had nothing wrong with his hands, so maybe he wanted to play silverware ball at the table. Maybe the servants cleared everything off, they put a ball in the middle of the table, and everybody around the table had a spoon, and your goal as you hit that soccer ball is to try to keep it on top of the table. So you try that. When mama says it's okay, put the ball in the middle, somebody goes first to hit it gently, and your goal is to keep it on the table playing silverware ball. What do you think about Mephibosheth? Do you think he did that at King David's table? Ah, something fun to think about. So those are activities for you to do a little bit later. And one more thing. We said that David had become a king. Here's your art project today. It's to make David's crown. Now, because I'm a girl, I made mine look pretty. I put hearts and stars, and I used all different kinds of bright colors, but this is a crown that you will make. All you need is a paper plate. You're going to fold your paper plate in half and crease it. 
Then I took a marker. Now you don't have to do this to yours. I just want to show you what it will look like. You're going to draw a line here because this is where you're going to cut. You will cut the plate in half, cut the half into half, cut the half into half, and then cut on the fold. It's kind of like you're cutting a piece of pizza. So when you are all cut, your plate will look like this. A cut, 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 and you'll open it up. And then you can just bend the pieces back and you can color it and make your crown. That's pretty easy, boys and girls. So then you can walk around like King David with your heart of kindness stretching out God's love to other people. Boys and girls, I hope you remember the lesson of King David. It started when he was a young boy, this act of kindness. He remembered, he didn't forget, and he showed kindness to Mephibosheth. Who can you show kindness to today? We'll see you next time. Have a good day.